Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Wade Watches. I'm Wade, and today we're doing something very special and very different. You are going, as just as the title suggests, this is a mega review video. And basically what that means is instead of the usual uh, one review that I do, I'm going to be giving you four movie reviews in one video. And I'm doing that just because, as you guys have know, I've been doing my Black Movies Matter series in honor of Black History Month. And that's where the majority of my focus has been. I'm reviewing those movies I've done for a uh, Black History Month review so far, and I plan to do more of those. So I haven't had the time to go on and make individual videos for all of the new 2023 uh, movies that I have watched. I have been going to the theaters and watching new movies, and I just haven't had the time to do individual videos on them. So just to make things easier for myself, I am once again going to combine uh, diff multiple movie reviews into one video. I have done this previously with The Menu and Violent Night. I did two reviews in one video for those two movies, and I'm doing that today times two. So you are going to get four movie reviews in one video. So without further ado, this is going to be kind of like a rapid, rapid fire session, but I'm still going to uh, be, you know, be as thorough as possible and basically, you know, tell you guys what I thought of each movie. So that being said, without further ado, let's start with the first movie that I saw, which is missing so going so I'm um, going into this one. My expectations were really low. Um, it just really didn't look like anything, anything, you know, super remarkable, you know, um, this, this, uh, young, young woman, this girl played by, uh, Storm, Storm Reed, her mother, who's played by Nia Long, goes missing, and the entire movie takes place on her laptop. I've seen that before with Unfriended. Um, I saw trailers in the theaters, uh, and it seemed like they gave away their big twist, so that's what really lowered my expectations. Not so much the, you know, the idea of, you know, this girl's mother who she was supposed to pick up from the airport going missing, going missing, just never showing up, um, you know, never showing up at the airport after her trip with her with her uh boyfriend not so much that that could be fine but it's the fact that uh in the trails they appear to give away their uh you know their big twist uh boy boy was i wrong this was a really solid mystery thriller from uh start to finish storm reed and neil long both did phenomenal jobs in their respective roles and the twist was actually unexpected and came out of left field and it was very engaging so this was this was a surprise uh you know plus a pleasant surprise for me i really enjoyed seeing missing and i hope to see it again before it leaves the theaters solid suspense mystery mystery thrillers uh very heavy on the suspense um very investigative and uh you really it, and it's a really good um mother mother daughter story as well um i like how you know it starts out with you know this daughter being annoyed at her mom you know telling her what to do so for you know it starts it starts out with that typical you know you know i you're annoying i you know you're annoying you're you're my mom and you're annoying nobody likes you blah 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 i don't like you stop nagging me sort of thing too i want my mother back because i don't know where she is so that was done that was done nice and again the twist the twist is something i didn't see coming and it was thoroughly engaging so i get missing an eight out of eight out of ten and i was not expecting the rated so highly just the trailers didn't really do it justice but uh that that can happen sometimes solid movie really enjoyed it all right so eight out of ten for missing now moving on to our second movie i now unlike missing i had i'd say to have i'd have i had higher expectations for this one moving on to our next movie knock at the cabin m night Shyamalan's latest thriller so m night director m night Shyamalan um is one of those directors who can either make something really brilliant and really thought-provoking or something really bad um a lot of the common consensus is and I, I i i myself kind of agree with this is that he started you know he peaked he peaked high and he peaked early on in his career 
tanked in the middle of it, and now he seems like he's on a steady, slow and steady um, climb up the upward climb. Um, old was old was okay. The, I'd say the concept definitely carried that movie for for me. That that was his last movie that uh, came out in twenty twenty one. And Knock at the Cabin is kind of in the same ballpark. I liked it a little bit more than old just because I feel like it has stronger performances and just because I personally felt that that whole kind of claustrophobic story that takes place in one location, just like old, uh, was done, was executed more well here just because there's, um, there's fewer characters in this movie. Um, it's just this couple, their adopted daughter, and these like four, four, I almost said three strangers. There's four of them who just, you know, knock at their cabin one day and basically tell them that they're they're on a mission from the divine and that uh one of one of them has to willingly sacrifice themselves to save the entire world. And, you know, obviously with that concept, obviously the couple and their young daughter aren't really down for that. And, and these guys are saying, if you don't do this, if one of you doesn't choose to do this, then you, you will bring about the end of the world. So it's just kind of this, you know, nice, it's just kind of this nice, tense story that just, you know, escalates in uh, tension and intensity and um, intrigue as it progresses. Very solid performances all around from everybody. That's the one thing I can say. Sometimes in Shyamalan movies, the acting can be kind of strange and wooden. Sometimes characters just exist to monologue about, you know, just like random stuff or just like really just be there just to explain. I, that's very noticeable in a lot of his movies. But this time around, I really felt it. Everybody did a solid job, especially Dave Bautista. He was the standout. Um, I'm so used to seeing him play Drax, but I forget that he's a really solid, serious actor as well. Loved him in this, for real. Like, he was really good in this. And um, I like how conflicted he was. I don't want to give, you know, you, you guys know me, don't really like to give away anything, but it's not what you think. I mean, I'm, you know, it's based off of a book that I know a lot of people have read. So if you read the book, obviously, you know, uh, what's really going on here but for those but for those of you like me who uh, went into this not really knowing anything about the story it's not what you think and um, I was solidly entertained by it I would say the way it it, it has a very predictable ending at a point it's like you know you know exactly where it's gonna go um, and it leaves a few questions unanswered so it's not a perfect movie it's not Shyamalan's best but uh I was I was thoroughly entertained from start to finish. I had a good time watching it. Um, so despite Knock at the Cabin, leaving a few questions unanswered and having a rather predictable ending, I give it a 7 out of 10. 7 out of 10 for Knock at the Cabin. Good job, M. Night. Um, I hope that you uh, keep making, you know, quality quality thrillers because, you know, yeah, I, I think you're starting to, you know, gain your footing again. So moving on from that, uh, coming up next, we have a classic that has uh, been re-released yet again. I am, of course, talking about Titanic, the 20, 25th anniversary, remastered in 4K 3D. So Titanic is a movie that I, ha I have seen it before, but it's a movie that I've seen in passing. There, my earliest memory of thoroughly watching Titanic I would have to say would be uh, watching it for middle school, uh, watching it in middle school language arts class, English class, when um, we were just, you know, we were reading something like, you know, reading something about the Titanic. And so the teacher had us watch the movie. And I remember it the most because in typical middle school teacher uh, fashion, she uh, fast forwarded through quite a lot. And that's understandable because, you know, it's a love story and we all know the uh, famous carriage sex scene um, and all that. And so, yeah, obviously that's not something that they want that middle school kids watching. So that's like my earliest memory of watching it. Um, I know, I remember like my parents watching it on network television before that, but like my most concrete memory of watching Titanic would be watching it in English class in middle school. Um, and I think I like kind of watched it in passing after that point, but it's never, Titanic was never one of those movies that I've actually sat down to actively 
watch without anything breaking my concentration. And the reason being for that is just because I'm I'm not a big romance movie guy. I it's just it's just not my favorite genre. Don't watch a lot of romantic movies or you know anything like that. Um, but I figured you know if I you know go and pay to see this in theaters in 3D, no doubt. There's no way that I'm going to tune it out or just, you know, have it be in background noise because I'm in a theater with nice big surround sound. And I, I thought of it as this being my opportunity to really actively watch Titanic and finally form an opinion for myself because it's one of the highest grossing movies of all time, directed by the great James Cameron. Um, it's the romantic movie. Um, yeah, I, I hesitate to say this, but it's, it's, it's that chick, chick flick that everybody knows, everybody loves. Um, I know the whole debate about the, you know, whether the boat, whether Jack and Rose could have uh, both floated on the wreckage near the end. That's not a spoiler. It's from, it originally came out in 1997. We all know how it ends. Um, so all of that, but I've never quite formed an opinion for myself. So I went in to see it. Uh, I put on my 3d glasses and uh, after uh, having watched all three hours, roughly three hours and 20 minutes of this movie starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet, I have to say, yeah, it's, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, I, I wouldn't say I'm as in love with it and I have this huge emotional connection to it as a lot of other people do, but, but, uh, it's, it's a very enjoyable movie and it's one of the rare love stories that doesn't honestly make me cringe though. It is kind of that same cliche, excuse me, cliche of they only knew each other for like one or two days uh, before they fell madly in love. But I kind of, there's like, there's, I like the motivation. I like how, um, you know, Kate Winslet's rose is like this very up, you know, uptight uh, girl who in reality, who deep inside is a free spirit, but she's kind of held back uh, by all of these aristocratic rich people. But, but, uh, but it's not just as solid cliche as, you know, she's just surrounded by a bunch of rich a-holes because um, her mom, I know her mom says like, you know, she doesn't want to go back to living in poverty. And that, that explains why she, really needs to get engaged to uh, Billy Zane's uh, Cal. Um, so it's not just, you know, the mom's cruel or anything. There's real motivation there. So I like that. And I also like, um, I also like the Leonardo DiCaprio's Jack Dawson. I like the chemistry they have. He is a free spirit. He's just kind of, you know, more or less of a vagabond. He just, he says, he says, um, you know, I kind of go wherever the, the winds, the, the road takes me. Um, I, I've been all over the world and I just, you know, take it from one day to the next. And I, I like that as well. And they, they blend well together. And so, and that's really good too, because the first half of this, um, movie is, you know, that straight up love story of the two of them meeting and, um, forming a bond together, um, her, you know, gradually beginning to realize that she doesn't really love Billy Zane, that she really loves Leonardo DiCaprio. And then the second half is just like, you know, the straight up disaster movie. Once the ship hits that iceberg, this becomes a disaster survival movie. And that's, um, that's admittedly the part that I, that I really enjoyed more so than the first half. Though, again, the first half was never boring to me. The first half is mostly people, you know, sitting and talking. Uh, there's, there's a bit of, um, you know, act, there's a bit of action because there is that scene where Rose does try to, uh, end her own life, but, uh, mostly it's just, you know, sitting and talking, establishing this romance. And then once the ship hits the iceberg, it becomes a straight up disaster movie with the survival of the fittest. That's the part I enjoyed the most. That's, that's the best, the, that whole climax till the end. That's the part of Titanic. I really enjoy the most really brilliantly well done and it and the tension like still holds up after all these years love it love it love it great great disaster cinema stuff right there so uh yeah um i really did enjoy uh titanic um if i were to 
if I were to criticize it at all, some of the some of the dialogue was cheesy. Some you know some of the romantic scenes were very cheesy. Uh, the story itself is that cliche of um, you know the girl girl or woman is engaged to a guy she doesn't want to marry. There's another guy who really likes her and kind of makes her realize that she's not in love with the guy that she is betrothed to. She actually likes um, this new guy that she just met, and the, of course the new guy is you know not a stick up. The ass like the guy she wants to marry uh, he's more he's usually more free spirited and he you know makes her he gives her a whole new uh spin meeting on life uh, that's been done a billion times so there's that and also um the frame story you know with uh bill paxton um getting you know wanting to get his hands on the uh what is it called like the diamond of the the heart the heart of the ocean diamond um I, 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 some of you might argue with me, but it's my opinion. I don't know how necessary that was. There's nothing inherently wrong with it, but I was, it was just kind of like, you know, did it really need to be there? I just felt that it didn't add anything. It was all right, but it just really didn't add anything. I feel like the movie could have like started right away in 1912, but I, I kind of see why it was in there ultimately, why it was, uh, why that framing story was needed um so you know just th that's like more or less a minor nitpick it did not drag the movie down so final verdict for titanic i'll give titanic an eight out of ten again i don't love it as much as many of you out there um but i see why it's it's deemed the classic that it is pretty solid oh and the uh the 4k 3d actually did um did add a bit uh it's not you know there's not a bunch of stuff flying in your face like there is avatar but uh the remaster was actually done nicely james cameron james cameron is a really good uh, technological director so i'm not surprised by that but it, it was pretty solid so yeah eight out of ten for titanic all right moving on to our final movie and arguably like the hottest movie right now hottest movie out right now the one everyone's talking about ant-man and the wasp Quantum mania. Um, um, I so I saw somebody uh, who already said this on Instagram, but uh, yeah, but I'll say the same thing. Yeah, solid, solid King the Conqueror movie. Jonathan Jonathan Majors was phenomenal, and uh, oh oh yeah yeah. Um, Ant Man and the Wasp are in it too. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up nicely. Um, it. Guantamania to me was just another by the by the numbers MCU movie, which isn't a bad thing, but it's just we've seen it all before. Um I I think like post Thor Ragnarok, a lot of Marvel movies are really gonna lean into the whole colorful, weird comedy vibe. And that's alright if it's done well like Ragnarok was, but um unfortunately as you know, with with this movie, um, it's definitely the weakest of the three Ant Man movies, and that's really saying something because um, before seeing this, um, the second Ant Man movie, 2018's Ant Man and the Wasp, was my least favorite. But uh, watching Quantum Mania made me appreciate that one more because it's just that classic case of style over substance. Let's just throw a bunch of weird, colorful looking stuff at the screen and hope audiences are engaged. And it's like, no, I need more than that you know i require more than that um and you have like the only interesting element that you have in the in uh quantum mania is once again jonathan majors as kane the conqueror every all all the rumors are true he steals the show he is a phenomenal villain and uh he is definitely worthy of being the phase five baddie following uh thanos but he's just the villain he's just one part of the movie and nothing, nothing else really in Quantum Mania really engaged me. I mean, the Quantum Realm itself was a very interesting world. It's a very intriguing place and colorful place with bizarre characters. But um, I would say the problem here is that they're trying to do too much with too little time. All of the Ant-Man movies are like barely, barely make the two hour mark. And this one is like five minutes over two hours so it's in that same ballpark and the problem here is that um as the as the marketing and trailers trailers uh, promoted this is a bigger story for ant-man it's not a heist movie a, a small personal 
heist movie or rescue movie like the first two Ant-Man movies were. Um, this is the movie that sets up all of Phase 5 to come, and it tries to do too much in only 120 minutes um it, it felt like it, it felt like you know just the mcu checklist let's have let's have that one funny character let's have that cute character uh you know let's let's have that scene that let's have that scene that briefly explains the backstory of of the villain um let's let's have um the scene that you know with, that's just the expedition exposition dump all all that stuff um and it just wasn't all that interesting um i didn't hate it i didn't dislike it um i think you know again visually appealing i like uh, some of the things that they do in the quantum realm but this is low tier marvel stuff to me um yeah um barely any better than love and thunder and uh yeah for the record i didn't i didn't much enjoy love and thunder so yeah that's not good so yeah i'm going to give quantum mania a five out of ten really i want to give it a four out of ten but i really enjoyed jonathan majors as kang and i really enjoyed um you know just kind of seeing what they're setting up with him and that's the thing too that's another thing that's another point this the literally the whole movie the whole movie is like there's more to come and and you could say like yeah literally all the MCU movies tease tease what's coming up next they do and they do all do that but I feel like uh frankly up until now they've at least attempted to tell a self-contained story with every movie with every Disney Plus show. Yes, they always tease what's coming up next. There's always easter eggs and you'll see, you know, the new rock stars making videos about all the easter eggs in the movie. So that's that's nothing new. But I felt like this is this movie was explicitly all about you know, we got we got big stuff coming up next. He's gonna be the big the big bad guy. He's a big deal. Kang's a big deal. That's pretty much the whole movie. Kang's a big deal. But okay, cool. But what about Ant Man and the Wasp? It's supposed to be his movie. What about them? And I really felt like they were kind of sidelined in their own movie in favor of you know teasing you know hyping Kang the Conqueror up. So yeah, uh, five out of ten for Quantum Mania. Really, it deserves a four. But I you know. You know, um, it was it was a good it was a good idea to get John, Jonathan Majors in on this. So yeah, five out of ten for Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania. And with that, bringing everything that brings everything to a close. I hope you enjoyed this uh, super special edition of Wade Watches, where I I reviewed uh, four movies in one video. And I will see you all next time. Thanks so much for watching.